Good morning, I'm Jorge Suarez and today I'll discuss extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis, the new face of an old threat. Media outlets have recently been very attentive to issues of global health. In particular, news about HIV AIDS and now avian influenza or bird flu continues to make headlines as the public demands information on the fight against these killer viruses. In one sense, this focus should be welcomed as it promises to raise awareness about these viruses and about the larger picture surrounding global health, including questions of conflict and poverty. At the same time, a narrow emphasis on HIV and avian flu threatens to overlook a new menace from an old disease, tuberculosis. Archaeological evidence shows that tuberculosis has affected humans for thousands of years. Formerly known as consumption, the disease manifests itself when latent TB bacteria are activated by some factor, such as exposure to active bacteria or a weakened immune system. Symptoms typically include cough with a thick mucus, swollen lymph nodes, fever, chills, and unexplained weight loss. Famous victims in history include Edgar Allan Poe, Frederick Chopin, and Eleanor Roosevelt. In the 1940s, U.S. scientists discovered a combination of drugs that reversed the effects of TB. Thanks to these advances, TB deaths and infections plummeted in developed countries, causing TB to fall off the radar over time. But in developing nations, where people have historically lacked access to proper medical care, the carefully designed treatment regimen for TB is often followed incorrectly. This has allowed some TB bacteria to develop a resistance to first-line drugs and to become MDR, or multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. And while second-line treatments have been engineered to counter this threat, the same process that led to the multi-drug resistant bacteria has resulted in a newer, deadlier type, XDR, or extensively drug resistant tuberculosis. According to the World Health Organization, only 50 to 60 percent of patients with XDR-TB respond to available treatment. Deutsche Presse reports that a string of cases in South Africa in early 2007 has produced 180 deaths so far. A report in The New Scientist exposes how in one hospital, 52 of 53 XDR-TB patients have died, an unprecedented death rate. In addition, sources tell the Edmonton Journal that this TB spreads at a rate much faster than ordinary or even multi-drug resistant types. What makes this problem all the more urgent is the troubling link between tuberculosis and HIV-AIDS. Of course, it's no accident that the countries most affected by the AIDS pandemic should also be the ones hardest hit by TB, as institutional deficiencies are largely responsible for poor health standards. Less evident, however, is the fact that people living with HIV are much more likely to contract TB than others. The World Health Organization estimates that whereas 1 in 10 HIV-negative people are likely to contract TB in their lifetime, 1 in 10 HIV-positive people are likely to contract TB in the course of a single year. For this reason, TB is among the most common diseases affecting people living with HIV. Fortunately for now, drug-resistant TB is not yet prevalent in places with relatively high rates of HIV infection. Still, the South African outbreak brings the total number of countries reporting XDR-TB cases to 27, including every country in the group of eight highly industrialized states plus Russia. A major factor is immigration. Sharon Close, a nurse practitioner in the New York City public school system, explains. There is a risk of tuberculosis, especially in urban settings and in urban settings that also see a great um, uh, play or span of uh, immigration and uh, refugees within the city, like New York City. We have a very high population of uh, not only immigrants, but also uh, refugees and uh, adoptees who are also coming to this country. These children have a lot of health issues, not the least of which is the fact that many of them have not had primary immunizations that uh, normally children in, in the United States have. Because public health systems in countries such as the U.S. are so strong, most cases are treated quickly and followed aggressively. But as new strains become more aggressive, it is imperative to block their spread in poorer societies in order to ensure that immigration and tourism will not overwhelm the public health sector and lead to a global pandemic. To this end, the World Health Organization has proposed a six-point strategy aptly named Stop TB, requiring $650 million annually to reverse current trends. This year, contributions from different states have so far fallen short by some $400 million, potentially placing the entire plan in jeopardy. So while there's still time before extensively drug-resistant TB attains the high profile of HIV-AIDS and avian flu, a substantial effort is needed at this stage to prevent this from ever being the case. For certain, this is not to say that issues such as HIV-AIDS and avian flu should be sidelined, but neither the scientific community nor the public at large should overlook the risks posed by this emerging threat. To do so would pave the way for a truly nasty visit from an old friend with a deadly new face. 
To know more, the World Health Organization at www.who.int. For The Global Current, I'm Jorge Suarez.